Now we're taking a leaf sample for genetic analysis. And you just grab some leaves with new growth? Yeah, so apparently the ideal sort of leaf is you want something that is not too, not too young and not too old. Not, so, not too young. Because <laughs> apparently both really young leaves and really old leaves can have um, uh, not a lot of DNA in them relative to kind of... Really? Young? Yeah. You would wow. think really young. I think... Um, huh. I forget what they said. It's, I think it's because they have it's a lot of... Lignin structures. They're like, lot, their cells are like big and they have, they have, they have lots of... Um, there are lots hmm. of veins relative to the cells. Hmm. Like they're they're all engorged with water and hmm. foam tissue and things like that. Whereas well, the old leaves have the opposite, so you get lots of xylem, you know, you get lots of woody it, you know um, structural stuff. Structural stuff. And there's like some kind of nebulous sweet spot in between. Basically what is like kind of getting an array. Like healthy looking green leaves is what you want, right? Mm -hmm. And not with obviously, and sometimes, depending on what you're doing, um, here and, we're And doing, this is the leaf that's most towards the center of the plant, yeah. and that's distal, that, that's the end. And depending on what you're doing, the sort of the, the level of your analysis, there's things like, um, you know, things that are growing on the leaves. Mm -hmm. I think now um, the techniques have gotten fairly robust that the DNA that's in here is gonna overwhelm everything so these small um, yeah. contaminants are not right. really an issue right um, and maybe and if you, you know, if you could be if you're doing a population genetic study you may want to like wash off your 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 clippers between right. individuals but again oh, or if you're taking really small samples right this is more if you're taking really small samples but here is basically you take a bunch of leaves. And so we're taking leaves, and we don't have to. You're not. You're not throwing an EDTA. You're not throwing any kind of preservative or anything. No, we're gonna use uh, silica gel to to gently dry them. Wow. That's, that's like a real science thing, there, dude. So again, there are people have different sort of kind of techniques for doing this. But. Um, Eventually, we're going to put these into into storage in coin envelopes, and so one method is to just collect them directly into coin envelopes right. and put the coin envelopes into the drying agent. Mm -hmm. That works well. It saves a step of having to having Transfer. to fish them out of here, and um, but it's in the field. It's sort of more. It's sort of you get uh, another thing to bring. Another and... thing to bring, and if it's windy, right, right? This is easier to do in the field. Just clip them into a into a bag like this, and we're just going to put the drying agent directly into the bag with the leaves. And then, how long will the leaves be exposed to the drying agent? Uh, Overnight? Over a month? No, like a few, a few days. And it sort of also depends on on kind of the nature of leaf, how wet they are, or how how um, these have. Um, are fairly, they have a waxy mm -hmm. cuticle on them, mm -hmm. so they take a little bit longer to to dry out. And so you're taking a bunch of samples, but when they actually end up doing the the amplification, they're just gonna take a few? Yeah, just yeah. a few. And um, yeah, we're taking way more than is necessary, but it's because we're here and we have a bunch And we can. Of, and we can, and it doesn't end. And we're it's, Americans. It's better, we're Americans, and it's better to always have, I took eight, Right. You know, right, better than run out yeah, or run something, out, or if right. drop the container or something. So again, we're gonna send some of these to the um, the Dutchman, and we'll just archive these. These are also great. They, they basically can sit there for a long period of time, and these are great for you know if someone comes along 50 years from say now, a master student right. at Oregon State or something, and you can see well have these things evolved, have they have they changed over cool. that time period? So. This drying agent, just silica, same stuff that's in, um, you know, electronics and little packets. I've seen it in Asian snack foods. This like is stuff we're not food. supposed to eat when we open up our mountain house uh, 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 dehydrated food. Kind of exactly. Stuff. And there's actually two kinds. There's a uh, clear, and then this Ooh, yellow, the, cool. the orange one is has an indicator dye. 
in it and um and so when it when it accumulates moisture it changes from orange to i forget what color it changes to maybe it just goes to, or something. to clear uh so it, it tells you when you're visually when it's absorbed water uh, there's different colors apparently the other colors have are vaguely carcinogenic <laughs> this is the safer <laughs> mm. Mm. or i don't know they're vague, they're sort of like lifeless like, they're like they're they're like um it's a spectrum uh, of toxicity. Organic dyes that are all are like you know all of those organic dyes have highly like, suspect uh, are suspect. Right. So we just pour it in there. Sweet. And that's it. And we'll so we'll come back after a, a few days and um, we'll put them into coin envelopes with all the same sort of match to the information of of the plant uh, press plant press specimens. And we'll just put them in, uh, people, uh, at the Smithsonian, they store them in boxes like this. And uh, I think they put them in the freezer. So you put the coin envelopes in there and put them in the freezer. We should also say, right, so the standard is to, to freeze this stuff. So if we brought any kind of, let's say, disease, let's say some kind of uh, insect that's going to munch on the plants, maybe kind of freeze them, right? Yeah. But you uh, wanna... before, before the final archiving uh, right, stage. Right, exactly. But you want to... Um, Apparently you want to dry them first instead of freezing because the freezing can also cause, if you stick them right into the minus 80, you're going to rupture the cells, all the DNA that's in the cells are going to go Far fly fat, out. Right. That can also da can cause damage to the DNA as well. So the, apparently the preferred method is to dry them gently like this, this drying agent. So it's going to be sort of gently but relatively quickly drying them out. And then, then you'll stick them in the freezer for... Cool. Longer term so now we have our, our, our visual and structural samples and our samples for uh, genetic analysis. That's awesome. Dr. John Lambrinos uh, of Oregon State University and uh, invasive species uh, uh, ingenue. How should we describe you? You're an invasive species expert <laughs> and globally recognized uh, specialist on invasive grasses, uh, plants in general, but I'd say invasive grasses, would you say? Yeah, I guess so. Yes, I have. Well, I'm just saying we have the we have the oh, yes. Cordideria, I, right? I've we have Spartina. Spartina, yeah. So those two grasses that makes me a, a specialist. People, I'm just saying you, you you have many skills. These are but a few of them. I'm just trying to articulate. All right, excellent. And uh, you also have a beard.